Welcome back, lords and ladies, to our final game of week seven for the Academy 2018 season. Up next, Golden Guardians will look to defend their playoff hopes against Echo Fox Academy. And while most of the teams in the league have managed to keep it close in the standings, Golden Guardians have fallen behind a bit and now find themselves in a very do-or-die situation. Yeah, wins don't necessarily lock teams in the playoffs for this week, but a loss here will lock them out for Golden Guardians. Yes. And Echo Fox victory puts them six wins over Golden Guardians with four games left to play, mathematically eliminating them. And while Echo Fox don't have playoffs on the line in this match, a win here will give them another week in sole possession of fourth place. Yeah, Echo Fox are really well positioned here at the end of the season they already are on the cusp of the last playoff spot and FlyQuest is their only remaining opponent above them in the standing so they have their destiny in their own hands yeah. and with that said Golden Guardians did hand them a loss in their first meeting in the season so Echo Fox still need to show the improvement here in the second half of the split and make sure that doesn't happen again let's get right into that mm. it's only time will tell let's jump into starting lineups right now on the blue side it is Golden Guardians that means it is Jenkins in the top lane. Potluck roaming around in the jungle. Bob Shin in mid. Jurassic at bot lane and a very special support. And Echo Fox on the red side. Building banner to command the top lanes. Alarim building it in the jungle is <laughs> Auto Orange. Building in the mid lane is Demonte. Haven't seen 80 carat yet. Do it, but why not lost? Yeah. And then Papa Chow at support. Building banner of command. He might even build it. So uh, upon the statistics of the day, of a blue, red, blue, red. Wow. It looks like Golden Guardians could actually have this game in the bag already. Yeah, that's great analysis. <laughs> I Absolutely. Love, I love how that's how you... Uh, Power of numbers, right? If that doesn't even make sense, but yeah. Yeah, 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 no, definitely. Uh, <laughs> really concerned here for Echo Fox being on the red side. Uh, no, I think they'll be fine. Luckily, it feels like... Sun might be in their eyes. Yeah, blue side, not quite as dominant here on 8.4, at least as far as we can tell early on. Uh, now that the bands feel like they're freed up, something we talked about mm -hmm. thus far, but quickly feels like some new OPs are taking their place, Scion in particular. Look at that little blue side Azir band. They say, yeah, no, you won't ban that, so I will. Galio gets taken out by Echo Fox Academy. And Demonte has been one of the best Zoe players in Academy thus far. So oh, we'll I feel so bad see. for him. Oh, well, darn. maybe he'll still play it <laughs> after the nerf. Oh, that if, gets he, if he does, and he just does really, really well. One of those situations where everyone's like, oh, okay, yeah, you put her in there. Yeah, ban uh, nerf her again, please. Kha'Zix out for Golden Guardian. So they say Odd Orange doesn't get a very aggressive start, at least on that. Hate going. Hits here, yeah. These guys are just kind of being like, we're going to ban strictly what we think is kind of a direct ban and not just what's being used. Right, we haven't seen too many of those power bans. Skarner still up. Scion still up if that's going to be something you're willing to trade for. I wouldn't be surprised to see that continue here. Golden Guardians ban the Scion. So that means it's more likely for Echo Fox to ban the Skarner. If those are the two OPs you're concerned about, you don't want to be able to trade them. So we'll see if yeah. this actually does force the Fox ban onto Skarner. They're debating. Ten whole seconds. It's like an eternity to Leah, actually. They say you take out the Azir. I don't want a matchup that's against the Talia if I don't get that. Yeah, it's interesting. So, I mean, based off how you see typical pick band trends go, you expect to see the Skarner first pick. And it was an interesting position. Golden Guardians put Echo Fox in there. If there's two OPs left up and you're on blue side, you can either leave both up and take the trade and have the pick of the litter between right. the two OPs, or you ban one. They're clearly preferring to ban one. Uh, Alorim was one of the first guys to break out that Scion pick. Uh, so no surprise that they didn't want that falling into his hands. And then it looks like they're saying, Potluck, we don't really care if you get that. Uh, nope. but they don't really get a power pick in return, so it's a little surprising. And I guess they're more scared of Bob Shins Talia. Echo Fox Academy, cold as ice to start things off. Rom Sejuani looking to lock things down. The crowd control is on the board. What kind of power can they put in their hands? Potluck says Jurassic might want this Varus. Has been play had quite a few plays on it already in the Academy League. I would say that this is definitely something that I consider more of a power pick as well. Uh, we were talking earlier in the day about how it has good laning phase, has wave clear, has a good one-item power spike, has engaged tools. Uh, it seems like a great pick coming up in this meta. And so Echo Fox early on, the Braum is strong and Sejuani is strong, but I wouldn't quite call them power picks compared to what Golden Guardians is getting here. And another one. <laughs> yeah, have to throw another one Honestly, on the list. The Rise made it all the way through picks and bans. Rather face the Rise than the Talia. I can see that, Ooh. though. The early laning phase of the Talia is super annoying. The Casio does get locked in. However, we're going to get that back again in the mid lane. 
You have that insta lock. Casio, seen this matchup mm -hmm. a couple times already in the Academy. Gonna see it once again. And you'll probably see a lot more in the LCS when that kicks off this weekend. Uh, it's just a classic, age old matchup between the two of them. Point and click CC versus a mobile mid laner. Tear stacking all day. Tear stacking on both of them. Morgana. Banned out. I thought that was Zareth at first. I was like, misclick? <laughs> Zareth support. Some Zareth. people like it. Oh my word, don't even. So annoying. Cho'Gath. Saw that last game. Not played to the greatest effect, but still trying to get them more tanks in or out of the game is the name of it right now. Alistar has banned that. Yes, yeah, since they had that Braum lock in early, trying to protect it a little bit. The Morgana, as we saw, I think it was in game two with Team Liquid. Uh, very clearly a strong pickup. And so they don't want to get countered out in the bot lane with Varus Morgana, since that is such a strong kill lane. And the other pick, the other bands for Golden Guardians coming in against Alarim. He see, played the Yorick. He's won with it. Hasn't looked dominant on it any time I've seen it. And he's like, he's, I an, want it. he's annoying. He's like pushing up in the top lane. You're like, I wish he would stop. But it doesn't feel like the Yorick is winning them the game. So a little surprised to see it on the ban list. He'll make the Bruce Banner minion. I believe he will. With the Yorick. Dig it from the grave. Ooh, Nar getting locked in. Jenkins going to try his hand on it this time around. We're still waiting for that. Top lane tank might just be a big uh, Alarim tree if it comes down to it. Could be the big tree, given that the show got the side on our band. That is, feels like the tank pick people are falling back on the most. And here, annoying team for GG guys. Yeah, I mean they I got love it. They got a lot of strong picks here. Tom mm -hmm. Kench and Varus work well together. Rise is no joke. Skarner, premier jungler in the current meta, and then Nar being able to be a tank but still bully other tanks. I like Golden Guardians draft. Resident okay. sleeper. Indeed. Gets himself locked in. So two of the same lanes, actually, we see coming into this. It's a lot of similar matchups. A lot of similar matchups. I've seen the jungle compositions as well. Today, we do get Tom Kench onto the Rift. We'll see if Thoracic goes up against Lost's Ezreal in that bot lane of Papa Chow's Braum. Pretty good matchups on both sides. I like the teams. It's really volatile from the side of GGS, so they have some great mix. Yeah, these are the exact same top half of the maps on the same sides. Right, right, yeah, it's like, these yeah. just it's, look similar. It's exactly the same. The only difference is the bot lane going for a little bit more early game focus with the Ezreal and Varus matchup instead of the late game focus that we saw with the Jinx Kogma. It'll be interesting to see what happens though because Varus generally seen as a strong pick into Ezreal, uh, but with the Tom Kench pairing up with it, it doesn't quite have that crazy all-in threat that you're scared of when it's Varus Morgana or something like that. Golden Guardians need this win, want this win, and they're going to be gunning for it. Here we are on to the Rift. We'll see what they can do from blue side. Picks and bands, pretty favorable for them. Can they bring that into the game? We'll have to see. Indeed, we shall. We'll see if Golden Guardians can play this comp better. We'll see if there's a double kill in the top lane early on. Ooh. If Odd Orange watched that last game, saw the path that Shrimp did, and is like, hey, that looks pretty smart. Maybe I'll give that a go. Uh, interestingly, he goes Precision yeah. Secondary on Sejuani oh, yeah. instead of Domination for the Zombie Ward. That feels... <laughs> Just damage, baby. Yeah, I'm surprised. It doesn't feel as good. It has a ton of extra vision. True. The extra vision is really big, especially with the change of the game. But he's, he just wants that damage. Maybe a little coup de gras, depending on what he's taking. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe some tenacity. Who knows? Maybe some tenacity. Love it. Also, uh, Aerie in the top lane said the fleet footwork on that Gnar. Ah. What Aerie we got? Yeah. Cassio's the same way. You want that precision, that precision secondary tree for the presence of mind. The precision dematerialized. The, the precision <laughs> of, of coup de alacrities. Coup de. Holding it so he can just blast it down with his E. Quick hit from Potluck as he's on the spires. Pull him in. I like it. Oh, he missed a big one. Oh, well, not a big deal. Actually, kind of big deal. A little bit of damage there. But they'll be fine to get off and running. Both on Raptors, his bot lane. Fights for two. Such a pivotal moment in the game. Lost getting an extra tag. I don't think he needed to do that. But he's all right. Nope. Took a little bit of damage for it. Uh, him and Papa Chow, pretty good early on mm -hmm. in the landing phase. And it might get a little bit more difficult as the time goes on, but Braum and Ezreal are such a great 
duo because they can play the game a lot of different ways. In favorable matchups, they can pressure pretty aggressively. In losing matchups, Ezreal's fine to go for more Q farm focus. Yep. Uh, Braum can also execute range minions with his Q and then get the stacks off to the Ezreal, as well as the roaming power. So, uh, such a strong combination of those two champions. Makes it easy for him, too. You don't have to worry about one of the Savoirs being long range going in for your relic stacks. Comes to the lane. They're not even in lane right now, though. Having fun. Papa Child's still level one, actually, as he roams up to give a bit of help to Odd Orange. Not going to hurt the lane too much. We do see Jenkins keeping close, trying to keep that airy back to him, but also on Alorum so he can up that damage just a little bit. Hello, Invade. So slightly different clears here. Both guys leaving up their Gromps for <laughs> right now. Uh, in the last game, they went for the full clear into the, the Gromp into Krugs, which was what gave Shrimp the time. Oh Instead, boy. Auto Orange wants to get aggressive. Things coming in. They felt like it was going to happen. Ooh. I like it. The choice was for X Special, the guy who cannot devour himself. So they did have the right target and get his flash. Also, no uh, W yet, so no Gray Health. Yeah. Uh, or E, excuse me. He has right devour. So, in no way to stay extra tanky. Unfortunately, the Arctic Assault went wide. Mm -hmm. Special was able to walk out of there, only costing his flash. Still a good gank, though, all things considered. Trying to keep the wave off of his turret. Alorum just smashing the minions up. But a good push in here from Jenkins. Should give him a little bit of trouble and starts to deny more minions. 27 to 19 even to start in the first few waves. Not, that could get bad. Not bad. Mm, not bad, but it could get bad. Well, it depends on either whose side. perspective. Exactly. I was That's trying to fit like, that in there, but it still didn't work. It's just like your opinion, <laughs> man. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hey, special. You are a big man. He's and you could be a dead man. No, he's good. He's, he's good. They actually have vision of a ward right behind red, so let me get... Had the idea to go a little bit harder. Could Papa Chow not have flash queued him and potentially killed him? Oh, he could have. I just think he was more afraid of, what the hell is this guy doing? There must be five bot. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. so afraid of the situation. And so there's a mid lane gank coming in. Oh, good room prison. Oh, flash to the other side as well. I should stop just, oh, and I should say things. As Odd Orange makes his way to hype. safety. It is, it is hype. Things are crazy after Grig Steals last game. My vocab went down a few words, and I just had to scream. Intelligence uh, down, hype <laughs> up. <laughs> Lock it. I'm sorry, tier. Getting charged up is all sums used to get back to mid and for a fight. And worth noting, something we didn't talk about too much is uh, bone plating, a new mm -hmm. rune in the resolve tree. Uh, you saw it there. They get these little green circly things around them. I assume those are bones, but I am not smart enough to identify them as such. Absolutely. Uh, and they get three hits that reduce damage, flat reduction, and then they go away. Uh, and usually what you see people do is they proc them, then they walk away and don't trade with the bone, bone plates up. And uh, it's a really interesting one. Some people think it's broken. Some people think it's just okay if you can play around it properly. Um, yeah, I want to keep my eye on that because there's so many changes in 8.4. It's hard to track all of them at once. But this seems like a game with a lot of bone plates. I think I've seen it on three or four champions. So this game, Mark, is specifically looking for green swirlies. I will not talk about anything this game, Riv, but bone plates. And green swirlies. I like it. I like it. We're going to get some in-depth discussion here. Philosophical bone plating. Wow, tears everywhere, actually, to start. Just got a one in the bot for Lost as they get him back and come in. Pretty even CS there, and obviously Devontae charging there's, his up. There's the bones. See, see there it is, yeah. yeah. It looks kind of, it looks kind of like a cartoony it's like owl a weird skull from the desert. Triangle bone. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know what bone that is. It's fun bone. Funny bone. That's what you need. Oh! They're gonna be good. Thought he was actually going for a fight, but no movement from Bob Chin. He's level six. Did decide to round warp all the way down. Just getting some wards in there. Potluck now making his way around. Gotta go for his red buff. His all camps are cleared. What timing here from the jungler is nicely done. But that, the Gromp is still up. Slacking on Otto Orange. That's the trouble with the Sejuani yep. Scar Scarner matchup. Is he's just a little bit slower, so you slowly fall behind every rotation of jungle camp spawning. Garner's able to clear everything, get back to his red, grab that one, get back on the map. Which one is struggling to do the same. 
sure he'd make that sound. Pink ward in six, but there is a box pink ward in that river brush. Shit. Not gonna get much. They see Rise actually yeah. going down. Odd Orange <laughs> picked that one out. Whips the ult. Slowly hiding there, trying to stay out of vision, but completely known to Echo Fox here. Paula coming up. Oh! Petrifying Gaze to the back. What do they think? They have the chase on there to keep it going. There's a huge priority for Golden Guardians to come up from bot lane there, and the fight continues. Gonna fractal through Odd Orange, can continue the fight. A quick lick and an acquired taste, possibly for a special. No chase there, but they're trying to get just a bit of map control. It feels like a huge miscommunication. Yeah. Echo Fox aside, not knowing that their bot lane could not collapse if that fight prolonged. The Sejuani ult whiff. Uh, and at that point, the fight's basically off. You can get more chunk damage on, but the flash followed by Demonte was just way too aggressive. Cost him his life. Definitely too hypey. But he thought he needed a few more hits, but he needed more than a few more hits as well. We'll see how they continue to play out from this. And down to Bot once more for the replay. Yep, so they get the trade damage onto Bob Chin, but then just went too far forward, kept chasing, won the ultimate. Tries to flash away later, but it's too little, too late. You're already completely dead. Better to hold on to your flash there. So they Use did it. have vision of Potluck coming in, and maybe he was just outside the range of what would have been his face in the back of Rise. I don't think they knew he was in the bot lane tribe brush when they started that fight. Right. But they should have seen it collapsing. Yeah, it could have snapped judgment. I don't know. A lot of speculation. Plays over. Yeah. We move on. Bob Jin getting the blue buff. He makes his way to mid, 82 to 77 there. Things are quite even and not much has really come to this lane. There's not a lot of roaming outside of the mid lane in this game. And it's only nine minutes in. Just one kill has been secured though by Potluck. Yeah, that first blood gold basically being the only difference in the game right now. Small, small CS advantages for Skarner and Nar. True to maybe 100, 200 gold. <laughs> And no love for the top laners just yet. We're going to get back to this part. It's going to be a huge impact when top laners continue to build banner. But we're back on the island where we just don't watch these guys fight anymore. They do their own thing until the TPs are up. And that's not just to go back to lane and farm. Yeah, it's interesting what's going to happen with top lane meta. We've been in one of the most carry-oriented top lane metas in a long time. Uh, lots of GP, lots of Gnar, mm -hmm. Camille, all these counter picks going on. The auras, sometimes. Yeah, you just see a lot of skill matchups. And now, it feels like we might be seeing less and less of that on the horizon. So, might help some teams out. We'll see. Gonna have to rely on who he plays now. Good grab. Which way is he gonna go? Flips him around, decides to get another fractal on him to get the stun. And that's going to be the kill that Potluck feeling really good. Being able to solo out the jungler, but that's not what you want to see in the bot lane. Good things and then bad things. You want good things on top of good things. You want your cake and you want to be able to eat it too. Uh-oh, Lost ain't out yet. Oh, flash in. Another get the acquired taste. He leaves and he tanks the turret. Nicely done by a special to draw that one out. Potluck will make it out with the exoskeleton safety. And Golden Guardians making quick work of these lanes. Yeah, it feels like Echo Fox is making a ton of Strange mistakes, flashes in situations you should not be flashing in. Once again, there by Odd Orange after he was basically already dead. The Skarner did not get over to the far side of the wall, so he ends up kind of right next to him. And then there, the flash in by Papa Chow. We'll take another look at these. This is just a duel that you don't win. Uh, I guess especially was, on the spire. Yeah, especially on the spire. Both mid laners get caught out of position. It was it didn't feel like Demonte was going to get there first anyway. So Odd Orange just gets messed up. Tries to flash over the wall, comes up short, so he dies. Uh, and then here, the bot lane fight that was going on, just really hard to win. Uh, it was going okay in their favor, but what was happening in the river, Skarner's gonna collapse, and you kind of already know that. So Papa Chow, just way too... Oh! <laughs> it was a good idea, but they weren't able to actually get on to Jurassic, and they kite it out. And then the flash Q there, as the passive had reset, doesn't get the bonus damage kill. I'm not sure it would have been enough either way. So just really, really over-eager play there. Nice. Continues roaming down from the mid lane, helps get that kill. And they have a they have a composition that can be relentless as well. If it wasn't that follow, it could have been an abyssal voyage without the round warp. They have so many ways to get those catches. And that's the thing is, does that continue now with a bunch of summoners down in the bot lane? Yeah. Your bar assault will be coming up in a second here. You mentioned the abyssal voyage being able to contribute. Skarner ult not too far off the cooldown either. So they have a lot of tools here to potentially keep forcing around this boss side and blow this game open. Swift will be in delivery. The aggressive play that we're gonna wanna see out of Golden Guardians here. Keeping their playoff hopes alive. 
Okay, so got our D mats on Papa Chow and Expecial for when we get our banners going. Expecial actually used that. Another one as well. It says I only need two. It's cool. We're winning, guys. We're, w we're winning. I won't need to use these on Baron minions because we're getting the Baron. This game. <laughs> oh, we've seen that change just last game yeah. twice. Yeah. Looks like first Drake going off nicely over to Golden Guardians. They've controlled the bot side of the map. They should be able to control the objectives. A good push by Jurassic and Expecial hold the priority in that lane. And they have nice deep wards. They'll be able to see Odd Orange, no pressure here. They can kind of have Jenkins go hard top if he wants to, harassing the Lorem with this airy Gnar build. We've been seeing that switch back with fleet footwork. Another Ocean will be next as the game now is objective free. Rather, Rift Herald's up top, but I don't think they're going to grab that just yet. Well, yeah, a little surprised to see them not transition that bot lane or that dragon into bot lane mm. pressure. Uh, maybe you don't brute force the dive, but you could have walked in as a pair and got vision. The minion wave mid was not needed to be cleared yet. Uh, I think they knew DeMonte wasn't around there. Now, Potluck, a little far forward with no rise nearby. Could end up Oh! 3v1, he says, oh, bad choice. They don't want to hit it. He actually got himself perfectly on the other side of the blast cone. Is that the thing that turns the fight? They couldn't continue to initiate. One last hit on the Papa Chow as Bob can chase too far. Potluck now, I believe the Fractal's in, starts to get the stuns up. Jenkin gets the kill as the teleport comes in. And Odd oh, Horn cannot code. trade back. Everybody lives! Oh, the Petrifying Gaze misses, but they do get a special. Can't go over the wall. Monte looking to get a Miasma kill. Oh. But it's only a two for one after everything is said and done. Golden Guardians are so two, sorry. lucky that is not a four for two. Yeah. That was such a misplay on how they approached that situation. They could have gone for that earlier after finishing off that dragon. Instead, they wait, and now they're not synced up between their jungle and their mid. Potluck face checks the brush that they're waiting for him in. He gets chunked out really hard. Now your bot lane's running through the turret, trying to get involved in this play. Bobchin's coming up the lane too far by himself. Everyone's getting hit by that Ezreal AoE damage. Then your teleport's coming in on the wrong side as well, so Jenkins does finish off that kill, but now he's playing catch up to try and help his team out. And if Cassiopeia was in this fight just a moment faster, that's two more kills going in her favor. Jurassic there getting stuck for a second on especially as you try to get out. A lot of chaos in that dive. And I always like to kind of look at those situations and, you, and think to yourself, if it's taken like longer than five or six seconds to set up and it doesn't look like the enemy is reacting, they probably know something's going on and they're setting you up. Right. It was kind of one of those things where our bot lane hasn't had pressure for a couple minutes. Yeah. You just took a dragon. Like, we know you can dive us. <laughs> They were prepped and ready. Odd Orange with a good hold towards the bot side. I can see why Potluck did it. They did see him on a ward and he held a long time down there. They used that time down there now to get an advantage on the top side. Rift Herald to be used and Jenkins gets a little more help in the lane. He's pretty even in, but a kill with this last fight. Rift Herald to help catapult that down into a second tier turret very quick. Looks like Potluck's gonna grab it actually. Yeah, so not even the side lane. Okay. Getting that scoot scoot on that Skarner. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, great start so far for Golden Guardians. As much as that dive could have gone wrong, it didn't. They only traded 2 to 2. They went back and took the bot lane turret. Now they're continuing to pressure around mid. This might be enough on its own to finish the turret off. Oh, they smite it for damage. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Not quite enough there on Shelly to finish it off. Oh, a little telegraphed by Golden Guardians. They could have tried to, to move Fox around the map a little more. I would have liked to have seen them go back to the bot lane, push one more wave, then come back right. mid. Uh, it was just a little slow on that play, but it's fine. They still get the chip damage in. They will take that turret soon enough, and Jenkins is still pressuring up on the top side on that Nar pick. See where the wards are going. Much different warding scenario here for uh, Golden Guardians. We saw trinkets for quite some time, up to 20, 25 minutes from teams previously today. They have two sweepers right off the bat. We're gonna spend a little bit more on wards here. You can see Special has three pink wards. As it just becomes the kind of cash flow where supports have to start throwing those now in these ward fights. It's actually three sweepers all the Three, you're right, yeah. yeah. So uh, Special's right, right. Uh, I'm kind of surprised to see that many sweepers in a game where wards are less frequent on the map sure. with the changes like you said to the tracker's knife no longer being in the game you have less things to hit with your sweeper so in that way they are slightly less effective as well well maybe they're thinking if you have less wards we'll doubly clear them <laughs> well i bet didn't have enough vision for this one though. yeah that's what i was about to say <laughs> i bet you wish you had more wards before that potluck down and that kill going over to echo fox to get a little hold over mid 
Yeah, and there was a ward to spot one person coming in from the jungle, but they had no wards in the bot river. See that escape path cut off, so no idea for Hollow that he was getting wrapped around on. Now this is actually going to result in the turret getting dropped in the mid lane as there's no threat from Skarner anymore. And the gold lead starts to shrink after it looked like it felt like Golden Guardians was up about 3k and ready to run away with the game. I feel like those kind of turns, while well, mid turret on the other side for Fox can fall immediately if something happens, those kind of turns are the hardest to kind of figure out for a team because that was Golden Guardians turret just a second ago and they lost their mid. They lost all that pressure they just used Rift Herald on and they don't have any vision set up to kind of guard that turret being down. It, became, it becomes a pink ward in mid lane now. So. Right, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of situation where you're going to, if you do lose this game, you probably look back at that play to be like, yeah. this is where we lost momentum. Exactly. How did we, what did we do here? Because we used the Rift Herald for not much, and then we lost uh, our own mid turret. And there it is. Like, just as quick. It usually it's not a big deal, but sometimes that becomes the way that you're, whoops, this was supposed to be our way to the next thing. Remember, after this, the EU LCS broad rebroadcast, I should say, going up earlier today. You can see all their beautiful Baron, or I should say, Banner and Baron plays themselves mm. that they had over there across the pond. So make sure to keep tuned in for that. All the league action, pretty much all weekend long, it just keeps going. Hard to consume, but always great too. Top's gonna go down as Golden Guardians make quick work of the outer three. They still have two standing. Yeah, so far it doesn't look like that. Death and turret in the mid lane going down for them has deterred them that much. They quickly grabbed the outer ring of turrets and now it looks like they're trying to make a coordinated five man play around this top side turret while Lost pushes down the bot side on his own. It's going to be dangerous to try and hold on to this by themselves. One hit, two hits. Lost. Red hit, blue hit. Yeah, one hit, two hit, red hit, blue. There's the turret they needed. A little extra gold, get some more item caps. Get those spikes rolling. It's gonna be an Ocean Drake here to keep Golden Guardians out on the map nice and healthy continuously. We'll start that off. Also get a little scuttle control. So more map control here for Golden Guardians in just a few quick plays. And all, pretty much from the start, they're playing like a team that has a lot to lose. Yeah, it definitely feels like there's a bit of a fire under their butts this game. Uh, working well together. Uh, not perfect control, you can see. They spent yeah. a little too long on the top side, lost their bot here, and then four man run all the way from top down to Dragon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not the cleanest play, but they do have the lead right now. And like we said, a pretty strong comp, all things considered. You know, it feels like they got a lot of power picks in this meta. Uh, and so one and a half thousand gold lead is plenty to potentially take this Baron buff as it spawns pretty much right now. They will have the pressure to force onto it. They also have a lot of tools for getting picks when things mm -hmm. are contested. You have the Skarner, you have the Rise Alt, you have the Abyssal Voyage, you have the Varus Alt, so many tools to pick fights. And that's maybe what Demonte's hoping for. He says, come into my lane, pick a fight, let me counter engage you with the ultimate. It's been hard to find. Golden Guardians is really stringing Echo Fox out a little thin before each one of these fights, finding somebody here or there, Potla, with a quick Predator hit on this Skarner as he comes in with the Exoskeleton speed as well. Looks like it'll be his blue. So if you're on the other side of the map, I will take this. Yeah, Rise doesn't super need it at nah. this point in the game, so understandable, I guess. Uh, it's also interesting uh, with the itemization that's coming in a little bit for Golden Guardians here. Some really early executioners calling. Another one. Yeah, one in the top lane for the Maokai 1v1 yep. split push, and then one on Varus, which is interesting, but if you're going to hit the Cassiopeia, it is pretty important to reduce some of that healing that comes in from her Twin Fangs. So I can see what they're thinking here. It is really nice. Sarah's Embrace as well, so that healing usually sticks in a fight since you're doing damage to the uh oh shield. Yeah, I was going to wait and see where that came up, and you can see Alora, I'm struggling here. He's like, I just want to hug you. Stop hurting me. Yeah, you can see the cameraman fights, fights back right now. <laughs> Ooh, my asthma down onto a special. It obviously has the gray health, and they're pushing themselves a little bit to get the deep vision in that could be the next play. Golden Guardians keeping a lot on their plate, but like the fact that Echo Fox is not giving them any more. Not so much giving, but being in the position where a mistake could be made. They're playing safe. A yeah, very safe play thus far. A little bit slower, but yeah. they don't... Uh, don't necessarily have as big of a lead as some of the games we've seen so far today. So understandably playing a little slower. Also, another interesting thing to point out, Lost going with the Triforce as real. Wants to put things into his own hands. Doesn't want that lame Iceborne Gauntlet safe build with the eh. hiding. 
You don't need that. We saw him on the other fight. He shifted in. In shift. You really need to kite people if you're going the other way. It's a one-way street. He's always going one way. <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly how you want to yeah. play Ezreal Riv, but it's great. It's it your own choice. Absolutely great. It has hurt him in the, in the past few weeks. He's out on Tristana as well. A few uh, misplays for him, but he'll keep himself safe. Orb of Alteration there. Keep a little bit of distance between him and the enemies. It looks like they're all pretty much even level as they go across the board. Nobody hitting 16 first. That might be Bob Chen as he keeps himself nice and leveled up in that mid lane with a few assists. And I'm wondering if some of this slow gameplay is, is resulting a little bit in what we talked about, the lack of vision tools. Hold on here. Glacial Prison eaten up, and they get out of this one safety, but alts back and forth there. That was not the chain of corruption, just a lockdown. Yeah, they did get the uh, alt out of Autorn for that. Instantly got devoured away, so a bit of a wasted cooldown by the Sejuani. And uh, what I was just saying was I'm wondering if part of the slower gameplay is a result of Golden Guardians having too many sweepers, uh, right. not getting enough deep vision on themselves to know how to find these pickoffs, because if you can't spot the enemy coming, you're going to have a hard time knowing where to be to shoot out those Varus ultimates. So feels rough, but now it's time for Bob Chen to try his best to clear this big old cannon minion. It's such an interesting way to play it. Everybody came in saying, we're not going to have as many wards, right? So why not buy more wards? Why not over-clear the wards that you do have then? And you see the other team sticking with trinkets. It's going to be very interesting to see how teams start to sort that out. And he does continuously get sweepers at one time. I like it. Yeah, they haven't even done a, too much of a great job at actually clearing that vision around the top lane. You see plenty of wards still deep. They spotted that recall coming in. Let's them know they feel safe to push up a lot more. Need to get some pink wards down. Potluck buys three of them. Lots of wards. This is where uh, buys one. Zombie becoming a big thing. Papa Chow's about to be pretty big with his banner on the bot side of the map. There is Elrims going to work on cooldown. You can already see. And just used once again by X Special there. So they're trying to get some movement made. They're trying their best. They got some pink wards down. The Baron buff now. Gonna need to advance that vision deep into the enemy jungle where they don't have any wards quite yet. They get the mid lane priority. They start moving in together, hopefully. Just like you drew it up. Remember, this is playoff hopes for Golden Guardians. If they lose this match, Echo Fox is able to knock them right out. They move to eight and six. Feel a little bit better about their positioning as well. Here towards the mid lane, Potluck with the left side. Notice he doesn't have a straight target to alt in as Garner. He decides to let the bot lane push here. Bob Chen should be able to do a bit of work. Yeah, going for this 1-3-1, one, one. their mid lane is just being focused down by the AD carry support and jungler. Bob Chin Whee! against the Rise. Woohoo! 2v1! Nice. <laughs> uh, and then the Nar is working up on the top side. The problem is with this, it doesn't feel like they're playing it quite aggressive enough. Uh, Infernal spawning in 10 seconds, so they're fine to back away from the yeah. top side of the map for now, work their way down to that. Infernal Dragon, but I hope Echo Fox gets a fight around this point. Uh, it's unfortunate they can't have the Blade of Rune King completed on Lost yet, but uh, Demonte's at some pretty big power spikes here and should want to take this fight. Instead, looks like we're going to yeah, pressure around the Baron. Oh, oh. Mm, do they? Yeah, you saw Potluck saying, hey, look, they're going to give us Inferno. Quick, go, go, go. Oh, my God, they're at Baron. This may be the bait that they need. A nice Q over. Uh-oh. Very nice piercing arrow to just say. We know you're calling the bluff. You haven't destroyed the ward in the pit to give us vision. Yeah, so they do scare them off it. In the meantime, Bob Chin solos the Infernal Dragon. So not much working for Echo Fox there. Don't take the fight. Tried to bait the trade to get yeah. the fight, but Golden Guardians put it slow and steady. Banner's back up on that bot lane for special. Side where he wants to use it. The 1-3-1 one, one continues here with both teleports being up for Jenkins Bob Chin. So it's up to Echo Fox, like you said, to kind of take that fight, figure out where their entry is. They don't have too many wards around here for Golden Guardians to get to. Everything's been placed forward, so that would be the fight. To stop them on. At least they get control of the jungle. Golden Guardians are giving an Echo Fox respect. Yeah, they do take the blue buff, and they have okay vision. I wouldn't mind seeing them just burn this down and start this off. Uh, Golden Guardians aren't really in position. I feel like they have a plenty of damage. Not going to go for it, though. Instead, just going to camp next to it and hope they get the face <laughs> check. But you see Golden Guardians just aren't contesting. They could have just done the Baron at this point. 
There is one ward to spot them, actually, that they have ping vision on. No, I want to fight. <laughs> they continue to put wards down. They say, don't clear them. It gives them vision. So no, we're not doing it. So now they start it up 20 seconds later than they actually could have started it up with vision. Everything now on the side of Golden Guardians can retaliate to this Baron. 2,500 HP, but they cannot break the distance necessary. Inside the party pit. What's going to happen? Pollock says, I'm in, boys. Let's go. He gets odd orange. They're going to lose the jungler, not the worst to get the Baron buff off of the Golden Guardians, tries to make a snap judgment here. Yep, not a bad call by Echo Fox. They use all of their ultimates that are usually used for engage to keep yeah. Potluck far away from the pit so they can get that one for free. They do lose a couple of flashes to get out of there. Cassio and Alrim, no way to hop the wall. Hop and Chow and Lost get out scot-free. There is this temporary moment where Golden Guardians has the man advantage. They're going to do their best to pressure up now, but this against Baron. Ooh, have to be careful. Be a lot more interesting if Baron did something to the enemy's minions as well, but you gotta consider is the buff going to cost you more than you'll be able to possibly get? Minion waves aren't readily pushed for Echo Fox. Alorum could work top side if they get there, but it looks like they're gonna say bottom. They say you wanna protect top. We're gonna crush down this turret before we get out. How long is overstaying here for GG's though? Well, I gotta say, it feels like they overstayed a little bit. They right. realm warp down to the bottom lane. They trade the turret, but this is a now they got a Baron rush. They got a they got a Bruce Banner creep going up in there. <laughs> this is gonna be mid lane turret down for sure. They're gonna try and hold on the next one. Malachi not really in position though. He actually went bot lane. It's one of those things where cannon creeps are so strong, it almost feels better to five man defend it and make sure it's gonna be safe. Here you're gonna watch a special run up and minion dematerialize it. There you go. Oh my word. And there's the late TP. Your minion's already dead, bro. Dematerialized. They got the uh, the caster, the wizard, on the top side here to fight in. Doink. It actually still does reasonable damage. Look at that. Magic missile! <laughs> I'm attacking <laughs> the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> They're out on to again the fight. I don't even know who's getting hit. Potluck. He got absorbed. He got knocked. He got bopped. And now he's down. And Expecial's about to take the damage next. Now Jenkins puts himself in the frying pan. And they're about to now take down the inhibitor. What a quick turn. It was GG saying, we can get the mid turret. We can get the bot turret. Look at all this we can get off that Baron mistake. They knew exactly what they were doing. It wasn't a mistake. It was the elongate to push down mid. And they still have that super wizard in the back line throwing those magic missiles. No way to defend against it. And with 15 seconds left, they could potentially end the game here with a so good strong. Push. What level is that wizard? He's doing big damage now. They got the tank siege minion in there. They are on to the Nexus. And what a turn. The game Golden Guardians needed to win to keep their playoffs hopes alive is being shredded now. And the Nexus damage 50%. The 10%. Uh -oh. uh -oh. The shots from the minions keeping it alive. Lost forward. Lost with the last few attacks. And Echo Fox Woo. take down Golden Guardians. Super close there, Woo. but you see. How important Baron Buff is. Holy Golden Guardians are winning the entire game. They get a little lax around Baron Buff. They lose it. They overstay a little bit on the bot side. And even though there was a misplay by Echo Fox allowing a special to yeah. run forward and dematerialize the cannon creep, the wizard still is there to win them the game. And then they pull the trigger because they feel like they're going to lose their base. They engage, but they're behind against a Baron Buffed up team with extra stats. They lose that fight, even though it kind of happened underneath their turret, and then they lose the game. I think they forgot how fast they would actually be coming back out of base, home guarded, trying to make a play and saying, we kind of are disregarded the fact that you're out of your own base. We have a very strong banner push. Right, they didn't clear the minion wave before they did that kind of rise realm warp down to the bot side, so they were perfectly happy to just ride that mid wave all the way down. There was not that huge of a bot wave, so instead of just yeah. tel teleporting maybe rise over there to try and get it by himself, they put a lot of people down there, and then they have to recall it's a really slow timer, and they end up losing the game. And let's check out the replays as we head into this one. Nine minutes and 30 seconds in, Golden Guardians playing very reminiscent of the sister team. Great early game. These plays left and right, turning the team on their head, and it just seemed to fizzle, but these plays were working out. Yeah, early on, you saw how important it was that their draft gave them all these power picks. Like, the, yeah. the Skarner basically just out-skirmishing Odd Orange here and winning that fight. And then the bot lane as well, being able to then win this 2v2, play it very well, and Potluck collapses to get this kill. Like we said, Pop Chow probably going to die there for flashing in anyways. Lost gets collapsed on. Here comes that Rise Ooh. pick, which is so strong now, able to Realm Warp in, join in on that fight, get a third kill. Quick back and forth, and they were relentless to start things off. Golden Guardians throughout the game, you would not expect the final fight. 
as we replay it to kind of be in favor uh, that fast of Echo Fox. The game turned on its head. Yeah, they lose one Baron buff, and then this fight I actually thought was starting pretty well for Golden Guardians. Sure, uh, Jurassic kind of gets chunked out, and they do lose their jungler right away, but this is a really nice Gnar ultimate, putting them in front of Jurassic and Bob Chin, but they can't quite kill anyone. That E just comes up short of killing Odd Orange, so he's able to sit in the back, heal up a little bit there before that final push comes in. Uh, and it did feel like Golden Guardians were playing the game a little slow, a little sloppy. We talked about that bot dive, which wasn't as clean as it right. should have been, and then what should have blown the game open. Then we talked about the mid play as well, mm -hmm. where they kind of got picked down the off. Rift. Yeah, they, they dropped the Rift Herald, nothing happens. They get picked off, they lose their mid lane turret. There were enough kind of indicators that Golden Guardians was not playing super clean that once Echo Fox actually had the game in their favor, they killed it. It was that holdout saying kind of, yeah, we have these lanes. They're not really teleporting around us. When they tried to split out into the 1-3-1 one, one, or 1-1-3, one, one, however they did it, it actually wasn't having that big of an impact. So it's kind of like you they weren't at their base yet, but you get that idea of we're stalling them out. This is actually going to be in our favor in an item or so. Right, and, and that's the big thing is they didn't play aggressively around the Baron buff, uh, and then they didn't play defensively around it yeah. either. They, they didn't go in uh, and try and contest that after they didn't have vision on the pit for so long. And then once they finally did get over there, it's too late. Well, I'm excited to hear from the players. To hear them all about that victory, I'd like to welcome DeMonte to the broadcast via Skype. Welcome, sir, and congratulations on the win. Thank you so much, guys. How's it going? It's not going too bad. It was a pretty intense game to watch. The early game was just in Golden Guardian's hands. What were, what was kind of the communication is they were just kind of pulling you guys all around the map? Well, I think, I mean, Golden Guardians played pretty solid early game. Mm -hmm. I think we messed up a lot of stuff because with Cassiopeia and Ezreal, we kind of just need to scale the two items. And then as soon as you get two items with those two champions, with the new AP items on 8.4, I think Cassiope is super strong once you get to that. And then Ezreal with Man Immune and Triforce is obviously just always been a strong pick. So we played a little bit too aggressively early game, and I think they took control like over that. Talking about your guys' comeback into the game, it came off some risky split-second decision-making. You had the Baron sneak, and then later that late-game push. Uh, what's the communication like there, and how confident were you guys in those calls? Or was it like, oh, thank God that worked out? Well, I mean, this entire week, scrimming on 8.4, I think every team started figuring out basically whoever gets the first Baron and has a banner of command pretty much wins. So I think once we uh, once we actually ended up getting the Baron and zoned all of them, we were pretty confident that we would at least take an inhibitor. And then as soon as they get picked on the inhibitor tower, I mean, how most scrims go is like, if, if you get to have five people sieging against three or four and you have a banner creep, you'll just win the game. So I think we were pretty confident with that. Absolutely. Now, l moving forward, you guys obviously have pretty good positioning as you move your way to playoffs and look for that. How is the team feeling as you guys kind of head forward? Are there any troubles you're just trying to kind of iron out here or are things feeling good? I mean, things are feeling pretty good. I think we started out the season really strong and then we hit a little bit of a dull moment mm -hmm. in the season where we kind of slumped. And now we got another 2 a week, first one since week one. And it feels pretty good to, because this week was super important. We're pulling ahead of all the other teams that are fighting for fourth. So I think as long as we keep this up, we're in a pretty good spot. Speaking of fighting all those teams for fourth, there's a ton of teams behind you. One a game back, two games back, a couple weeks to go here. Uh, are there any games or opponents that you've kind of pinpointed as critical ones to win or people you're really watching out for, putting a little extra focus on? Well, next week we play Clutch and CLG, both who are one game behind us in the standings. So I think... Once that comes around, I mean, if we can beat both of them, I think we're clinched for our playoff spot. So that will be very important, obviously. And then other than that, I don't think we're really focusing on the other teams too much. We just are going out there and trying to win our games. All right, DeMonte, thank you very much. Congratulations on the win, and best of luck as you guys shoot for that playoff spot. Cool. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. So that is all the games we have for today. Let's see how the standings shake out after week seven. FlyQuest holds the top spot in Academy, followed by Cloud9 and Team Liquid, who are now tied for second. Echo Fox has sole possession of fourth place, but they have four teams right behind them in fifth. Yes, that makes sense. 100 Thieves are only one win behind that pack of teams, with Golden Guardians in last and now out of playoff contention for the split. Academy waves goodbye this week, but the NALCS says hello as it returns tomorrow with the same matchups. That is absolutely beautiful. They may not be as crazy as today, but we are going to get to see how the LCS pros take to the new change. Team Liquid versus 100 Thieves is obviously kind of the highlight match for tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be really interesting because 
TL has felt really up and down all split. Yep. Uh, and then 100 Thieves had like a really hot start, a really weak middle, and feel like they're turning it around. So this is actually a great barometer for both teams at this point in the season. Good word. I like it. So if you need to feed your league esports addiction right now, fret not, coming right up is the EU LCS rebroadcast so you can catch up on the games you missed from this morning before they return live tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Central European time. Now before we sign off for the night, we also want to call some attention to season three of City Champs. Our friends over at Super League Game run nationwide tournaments for players of all skill levels where you can meet other league players from your city and play live on the big screen. So whether you're a diamond duo or still working on those silver promos, check out superleague.com for more details on how you can represent your city and play like a pro, just like Mark over here. <laughs> for myself, no. Mark, and the entire Academy crew, thanks for watching, and we will see you next week. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate the support, but, but no. Known to Echo Fox here. Paula coming up. Oh, petrifying gaze to the back. What do they think that the chase on there to keep it going? But that's not what you want to see in the bot lane. Good things and then bad things. You want good things on top of good things. Pot look now, I believe the fractals in, starts to get the stuns up. Jenkins gets the kill as the teleport comes in. And odd oh, horn cannot code. trade back. Everybody lives! Oh, the petrifying gaze misses, but they do get a special. Potluck, <laughs> he got absorbed, he got knocked, he got bopped, and now he's down. And Expecial's about to take the damage next. No, Jenkins puts himself in the frying pan. The 10% uh -oh. uh -oh. the shots from the minions, keeping it alive, lost forward, lost with the last few attacks, and Echo Fox Woo. take down Golden Guardian.